Hi, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is Balu here. Uh, today's session is going to be on part 5 of uh, software design. I will uh, quickly take you to the session objectives. Uh, we are going to discuss on the design quality and we are going to elaborate upon two important uh, concepts of design quality which is called as cohesion and coupling. So first we shall define uh, what uh, design quality is. So before we actually jump into design quality, first we shall say what do you mean by quality. So quality means uh, customer's uh, satisfaction or conformance to requirements. So how does quality orient towards design? So we say that design quality depends upon capability to correctly implement the specification. If your design actually implements the specification properly, then we say that that design is of a quality design. Now what is specification? Specification is nothing but your requirement specification and functional specification which are actually depicted in your SRS. And the quality design also is one which can be transformed into an efficient code. And most importantly, it should be able to adapt to changes easily. So that is very important. If at all you have a quality design, making changes to the design is much more easier. Now there is one uh, mantra for uh, design quality which is a basic thumb rule in software engineering. The design components must be highly cohesive and loosely coupled. Now we have to understand uh, what do you mean by highly cohesive and loosely coupled. If you want to understand this, you need to first know what is the meaning of cohesion and coupling. So first we shall understand what do you mean by cohesion. So cohesion basically means the degree to which all components, all elements of a component are directed towards a single task. Now we know that the uh, module performs a particular task and the module may have multiple components in it. Now a component in a module could be as simple as a function. Now if all the components of a module are actually directed towards performing a particular task, then we say that that module is highly cohesive. So in other words, we can say that cohesion is actually nothing but the strength of a module. So if the module strength is very high, means that it is actually performing only one, one task and all the components of the module are actually directed to perform that particular task. Now high cohesive modules will exhibit certain additional properties which are the most desirable properties. Uh, the properties exhibited by the cohesion are when I mean highly cohesion modules are robustness, then robustness actually means that the modules uh, are actually error free and the correction of error could be easier. Uh, it are, if they are reliable, you know what is reliable, reliability is you can trust those modules because they work all the time and every time. Reusability, you can make use of those modules anytime for any projects and understandability, you are able to read the modules properly so that understanding the design of the module is much more easier. So these are some of the properties which are actually exhibited by highly cohesive modules. Now there are different uh, levels of uh, cohesion uh, which are very important. Uh, we start from coincidental cohesion which is actually very low and functional cohesion which is very high. So we know that uh, the quality design should be highly cohesive. That means we need to aim at uh, getting a design of functional cohesion and we need to avoid coincidental cohesion and there are certain other levels of cohesion which can go in sequential order but what is it we need to achieve is functional cohesion. But we need to understand what are the different types of cohesion like logical, temporal, procedural, communicational and see where we can use that. Okay. So the first uh, cohesion we are going to talk is called as coincidental cohesion. Now what is uh, coincidental cohesion? Coincidental cohesion as the uh, name it itself implies, it basically uh, comes into conclusion on coincidence. That means the parts of the module or components of the module are grouped arbitrarily and the parts are grouped in, in a mere coincidence fashion. So what does it actually mean? Now you have an, uh, a module called employee. This employee could be a class. Now this employee class could have having certain methods. So it has a method called open employee file, uh, read employee record, print page headings, 
uh, open employee master file set page count and set error flag now if you can see and observe these methods very carefully there are certain methods which are actually not logically related to employee print page headings and set page count and set error flag may not be actually related to employee but open employee file and read employee record and open employee master file are actually related to employee that means the this particular module has got certain components which are performing diversified task so why are they performing diversified task if you ask me a question then we can say that these uh, diversified task methods are actually put in this particular module called employee in a mere coincidental fashion therefore we call this kind of uh, cohesion as coincidental cohesion and this is the worst type of uh, cohesion which can be ever encountered in software engineering so we need to avoid it so as you can see from here coincidental cohesion is one which is having a very very low cohesion so when i mean very very low cohesion what does it actually mean the design quality is very less and you are not supposed to actually implement this in your design the next type of cohesion is called as logical cohesion so what is the logical cohesion elements of the components are related logically and not functionally now let us uh, consider an example here input functions to read input from keyboard and mouse is embedded in both of the devices but both implementation is different now let us say that you have uh, a requirement where you have made a design where you need the input of both keyboard and mouse now when you want to need a key input of both keyboard and mouse you basically design an input function so you put those two components input function inside a module okay but though they are input functions of keyboard and mouse the implementation of the input function of a keyboard is totally different from the implementation of an input function of a mouse so we say that they are logically related but they are functionally not related so this kind of uh, uh, you know cohesion is called as logic logical cohesion even this must be actually avoided in uh, software engineering design then we have uh, temporal cohesions temporal cohesion means uh, elements are grouped when they are processed now the best example of uh, temporal cohesion is uh, you know exception handling in java we know what are exceptions uh, exceptions are nothing but uh, runtime errors so runtime errors are the errors which are actually occurred when the program is running now in order to handle an exception there are two blocks which are used in any object oriented programming one is called a try block and the second one is called as a catch block now uh, uh, the statements that causes an exception is actually put in a try block and example is for example you have a statement uh, which could actually create an exception called divide by 0 so that statement is actually put in a try block and whenever that exception uh, occurs you need to have a block which will handle that particular exception and the program execution continues sequentially so handling of an exception is handled by an catch block okay so when an exception uh, is encountered what happens the try block will throw an exception object okay you can see here it is throwing an exception object and that object is caught by the catch block and the catch block will handle that particular exception so even though in this picture you are seeing uh, one catch block but in reality there could be multiple catch blocks to handle multiple types of exception now this is a solid example of a temporal cohesion because elements are grouped when they are processed so what does this mean here elements are grouped means what the catch block uh, statements are grouped when they are processed which means depends upon the execution of the try block or depends upon the objects thrown by the try block so this kind of cohesion is called as temporal cohesion and the next uh, cohesion we are going to discuss is called as you know procedural uh, cohesion uh, the procedural cohesion means elements of a component are related only to ensure a particular order of execution very important now look at this particular module which has got three functions 
a b and c as i told you earlier functions are nothing but components now that means you can consider that the module has got three components a b and c and look at what these three components are doing these components a b and c have different functionality that is component a would be writing an uh, write an output record component b would read an input uh, 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 read a new output record component c would pad input with the uh, spaces and component c would actually return new record so the functionality assigned to these components are again diversified which means that the module is actually perform multiple number of tasks but uh, the only thing is they are executed in a particular order so we call the them as procedural cohesion procedural cohesion related by order of functions which means after function a function b is performed are called and after function b function c is performed okay now we shall see what is uh, communicational uh, cohesion so communicational cohesion is very similar to procedural cohesion with an only difference is all the functions which are shown here they act on a particular data so how do you define a communicational cohesion elements of the component are performed on the same data or to produce the same data very important now these functions a b and c are a part of a module and you can see that these functions are actually interacting with a database so when they interact with the database they actually interact with a particular table and a record in that particular database so the function a b and c actually update a record on a database or print the record on a database and they actually work upon one single record of that particular database so we call them as communicational cohesion and as well very well explained in the figure here communicational access same data so this kind of cohesion actually access the same data now we have a type of cohesion called a sequential uh, cohesion so what is sequential cohesion output of one part is fed as an input to another part now again i have a module which has got three functions a b and c now they are executing in a sequential order which means what after a b is executed and after b c is executed but uh, what is the striking difference here is the output of function a is fed as an input to function b and the output of function b is fed as an input to uh, function c now let us say that uh, uh, you have a, a module where you know you have uh, three components uh, function a b and c which are exclusively used for sorting searching and displaying now sorting will actually sort all the elements in an array either in ascending and descending order and searching is actually used to search an element in that particular array and depending upon whether the element is found or not the display is actually going to display the element and the position of the element now this kind of cohesion is called as sequential cohesion okay now the last cohesion you are going to learn is called as functional cohesion so what is functional cohesion module with functional cohesion focuses exactly on one goal and of course this is what uh, uh, we need to achieve in all the examples uh, uh, we have discussed earlier the module is actually performing on multiple goals but it's only functional cohesion where the module focuses exactly on one goal and it is an ideal situation when i mean it's an ideal situation it is an situation which basically focuses on utmost uh, uh, design quality now have a look at this uh, example of a functional cohesion uh, which is sequential with complete related functions now there are three parts part 1 part 2 and part 3 and all these uh, parts belong to a particular module and all the parts basically orient to only one function which is function a here rather than considering the name of the function uh, you should actually consider it as a functionality which means part 1 part 2 part 3 are actually working towards an common functionality when they all work towards common functionality we say that we have achieved functional cohesion which means it performs only one function and nothing else so the aim of a good design is all the modules basically should adopt to functional cohesion okay now apart from cohesion uh, one more parameter which uh, determines the success of a design where we say that a design is of a good quality is coupling 
So what is coupling? Coupling actually means strength of interconnection between the components or modules and the degree of dependence such as the amount of interactions among the components. We know that uh, systems or you know, modules, uh, they just cannot work independently. They may have to depend upon other systems or modules sometimes, they may also depend upon other modules which means that they may have to depend on other modules by sending and receiving data. Now when they do that, there is a dependency factor coming between the modules. So when the dependency factor comes in, we call them as coupling. So there are three uh, you know, pictures here which are shown. Now the first one means where the four modules are there, A, B, C and D, though the names are not mentioned, uh, they are not at all connected with each other, so there is no dependency at all, so absolutely there is no coupling. But in second and third, uh, you have loosely coupled some dependencies here. That means A, B, C and D are all interacting with each other, but the dependency between them is very less. But in this case, the dependency is very high. So what is the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, principle of a good quality design? It should be loosely coupled. What is the meaning of loosely coupled? The modules which are actually interacting with each other should have less dependencies amongst them. And just like cohesion has got many types, coupling also has got many times. So we shall actually discuss all the kinds of coupling in elaborate. Now this is a uh, simple example of uh, uh, what is uh, coupling. Uh, I have discussed in my previous session two types of design strategies. Okay, The first one is called as a functional oriented design and object oriented design. Now here in functional oriented design as you know, uh, all the modules share a common data. Now you have A, B, C and D. These modules share a common data, which means that modules A to D, they are totally dependent on this particular shared data. So we can say that this design is a tightly coupled design. On the contrary, you have a loosely coupled design where you have identified objects. You know that objects have a name, uh, they have a attribute and they have their own methods. Now, attributes are uh, nothing but data elements or data structures. So each uh, module has got its own data. So which means that they don't depend upon the shared data. So we call them as loosely coupled. So loosely coupled, the dependency is very less, whereas tightly coupled, the dependency is very poor. So that is one of the reasons why object-oriented programming is actually preferred over functional design or functional programming. Now in order to make you understand how exactly a design that is coupling is related uh, to program, I have taken a small you know, uh, program snippet itself. Now this program snippet actually focuses on object oriented programming. Uh, let us say that you have got two classes. One is called a traveler class and second one is called as a car class. Now what I have done in a car class is I have a method called move. Uh, let us not worry about the logic of that particular method. We are not worried about the implementation. Now the point of importance here is I have created an object of a car class within the traveler class. That means an instance of a car class which actually created in a traveler class. You can see here car C is equal to new car, which means C is an object of a car class which is created in a traveler class and the traveler class also has got a method called start journey. So inside the start journey method, I am calling a method called move which belongs to a car class from an object of the car class. Now the object of the car class is C, so using that object I am calling a method called move. So from this we can know that there is a dependency between a traveler class and a car class. Okay, the moment we say dependency, there is some kind of coupling. But here it is a very tight coupling. Why? Because any changes in the car class, you have to actually make those changes in the traveler class. So the dependency is very high. Uh, if you want uh, to make to give another example here, now this is perfectly working fine for an object called car. Now if I want to use this program for a bike object, then probably I may have to change this particular uh, car class, which means that I have to make those uh, changes in the traveler class as well. So there is a high dependency happening between uh, the traveler class and a 
are class so we say that as a tight coupling now how do you avoid this now object oriented programming uh, uh, comes out of the concept called interfaces now interfaces are uh, very much used in java so what exactly is an uh, interface an interface is just like a class uh, which has got some methods but the only difference is class has got method just methods whereas interface has got methods which are abstract in nature now what do you mean by uh, abstract methods abstract methods are those methods which are actually implemented in the class which actually extends that particular interface now uh, uh, if you can see from this particular picture here there is an interface called vehicle and there is a method called move and there are two classes here one is called a car class and the second one is called as a bike class now both the classes are actually implementing this particular interface called move so this move method has to be overridden in the car class and it has to be overridden in the bike class as well so you can add any number of uh, classes uh, for example you can also have a bus class now and the bus class in turn also can implement this particular interface and you can override that uh, move method in the bus class now their class traveler here you can see has may has got some slight modifications unlike what we saw in type tight coupling the tra class traveler class we are actually inducing an dependency object so you can see that we are trying to create an uh, object in the uh, set v method now this set v method is going to create an object and or uh, induce an object and that object is actually going to either call the move method of a car class or a bike class using the this pointer now if the object induced is a car object then uh, the value of v becomes car v dot move becomes car dot move which actually uh, you know calls the move method of a car class and if the object induce is bike then uh, bike dot move will actually call a move method of a bike class so like this uh, i can induce uh, any number of objects and uh, i can call those relevant uh, move methods of the classes which are uh, implemented from the interface now you can understand any changes you make any changes you make in this uh, particular uh, class either uh, car or bike or adding of one more class uh, may not merely affect the uh, uh, may not merely affect the traveler class so that means that the traveler class and the uh, other classes are actually loosely coupled now there are different uh, types of uh, coupling okay now uh, you have uh, uh, content coupling and uh, carbon coupling uh, now they are high coupling uh, mechanisms so this needs to be avoided and apart from that you have uh, external coupling control coupling and stamp coupling they are of the type uh, loose coupling they are advisable uh, but uh, uh, it's not always very good what we need to try to achieve is uh, a data coupling and uncoupled this is what we need to uh, achieve okay now we shall uh, throw some light on what exactly are these uh, various kinds of coupling first we shall see what is content uh, coupling so content coupling means one component modifies another very simple okay now you have got uh, two modules module a module b the both these modules are depending uh, uh, with each other now uh, there is a small element of data in module b now module a refers to this particular data in module b that means uh, this kind of coupling is called as content coupling because module a refers to the content of module b now uh, this coupling should be avoided because of the reason that uh, it is a high coupling mechanism and we don't require high coupling mechanism in quality design we actually need a need a low coupling mechanism the next uh, coupling is called as uh, common coupling now as the name itself indicates the moment you hear the word common uh, we have to think of global variables so what is common coupling more than one component share data such as global data structures now there are three modules here module 1 module 2 and module 3 all the module 3 all the three modules share a common data structure so common data structure means they could be global variables which means all the modules are capable enough to modify the global variable uh, to understand this i have illustrated a small uh, c program now there is a uh, variable called g which is of an integer 
type and whose initial value is equal to 10. Now know that since this variable is uh, declared above the main function, they are called as uh, the g variable is called as a global variable. Now there are three functions, function 1, function 2, uh, two functions, I'm sorry, function 1 and function 2. Now these two functions are actually trying to access this particular global variable g. So when we come to the main method, I am calling the function that is function 1 and function 2. Now function 1 what it is doing is it is just increasing the value of g by 10 and function 2 is also increasing the value of g by 20. So which means that initial value of g was 10 and after the execution of function 1 the value of g becomes 20 and after the execution of the function 2 the value of g becomes 30. So what does this mean? More than one component share data such as global structures. So which means that both function 1 and function 2 are actually acting upon g and they are changing the value of g. Now this is not advisable. Why? Because there is a huge uh, dependency of these functions on this particular global variables. So common uh, uh, coupling should also be avoided in your software design. If you do that, we don't say that it is of a good quality. Then the other type of uh, coupling what we need to discuss is called as an external coupling. So what is external coupling? Two components share something externally imposed. Now uh, in the previous example, uh, the functions and variables were in the same program, but there could be a situation or a scenario where functions will try to access an external device. Uh, like an external file or a device interface or a protocol or a data format when they try to uh, 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 when they try to actually access an external device or an external file or something uh, which is an external entity then we call them as external coupling now uh, uh, the next type of coupling we are going to discuss is called as uh, control uh, coupling so what exactly you mean by control coupling one module determines the control flow of another. Now, uh, assuming that you have a module called M1 and this M1 module is in turn calling two modules, M12 and M13. So, calling of the module of M12 or M13 depends upon a control flag. Now, uh, we shall see what do you mean by a control flag. Uh, just have a look at this code snippet here. You have a method called draw which is taking one argument called draw cmd. Now depending upon what value this draw cmd has got, I am either calling a square method or I am calling a circle method. So you just see here, I have given an if condition, if draw cmd dot equals draw square, which means if the value of draw cmd is equal to draw square, I call a method called draw square, else I am calling a method called draw circle. So here the control flag itself uh, determines whether to call a draw square or a draw circle. The control flag is actually the draw cmd argument. Okay, now this kind of coupling is called as control coupling. Then we have uh, stamp coupling. Now uh, what you mean by stamp coupling occurs when complete data structure is passed from one module to another module. So here again I have got module M1. So this module M1 is in turn calling M12 and M13. Okay, now when it is calling M12 and M13, the module M1 is actually passing some data to M12 and M13. But it is not just passing a simple data, it is actually passing an entire data structure. Okay, A data structure could actually uh, be the complete record of a particular table. Now have a look at uh, the uh, implementation of a stamp couple here. Uh, there are two modules, one is called retrieve customer information and retrieve customer address. Now retrieve customer information is a calling module and retrieve customer address is a called module. Now when this module is calling this module, it is actually sending customer details as an input. Now this customer detail is a data structure because it is not one single detail, it is a collection of detail. It could be a complete record which is being passed from one module to another module and this module will retrieve some data and give it back to the calling module. So customer address is the data which is retrieved by this calling module and it is passed on to the called module. Now this kind of coupling is called as stamp coupling. Okay. 
Now, uh, uh, the another coupling uh, which is very important and which is commonly used in uh, uh, design is called data coupling. Now, what is data coupling? Very similar to stamp coupling, but one uh, difference is component passes data, not data structures to another component. Here also you have got the same calling module and a call module. Now here the calling module is retrieve customer uh, information and the called module is retrieve customer address. But instead of sending the entire data structure, I am actually passing one data element called as customer ID. So when I pass this data element as a customer ID, what this module is supposed to do is, this module will look into the database and retrieve the customer address of that particular uh, uh, table and of that particular record and it will pass on to the uh, calling module which is retrieve customer information. Now this type of coupling is called as data coupling. Now I have put both the pictures here which is cohesion and coupling side by side. We know the, uh, call, we know the design principle of uh, uh, good quality design that a good quality design should have modules which are highly cohesive and loosely coupled. So highly cohesive means we have to try and achieve uh, functional uh, cohesion and loosely coupled means we have to either talk of data coupling or uncoupled where there is no dependency at all. Uh, if we can achieve designs of this particular sort then we can say that our design is of utmost quality. Thank you for uh, watching this uh, particular uh, video. Uh, do subscribe to our channel SP Tech and don't forget us to like us on our Facebook page. I will see you in my next uh, video where we are going to discuss on uh, uh, software design notations where we are going to have an elaborate discussions on data flow diagram, structure charts, etc.